This is the Xiaomi Pad 6. This is a budget priced Android tablet with a premium feel. And today I'm gonna to be checking it out. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals and I almost didn't review this. I was very close to just ignoring it completely. First of all, the Xiaomi Pad 6 is not available officially here in the US where I live. This presents a couple of problems. One is just buying it. You can find it if you go on eBay and there are some resellers like this one where I picked mine up. But since it's not officially available in the United States, it does have some quirks. For example, it doesn't have Google's Play Store installed by default. That was a pretty easy thing to remedy, but I I did come across some little quirks here and there. For example, I changed the language over to English and I changed the keyboard over to English, but I didn't fully change everything over to English, like the enter button is still in Chinese. There's probably a way to change that, but after my fiddling around for a while, I didn't find it and I knew what it meant, so I just rolled with it. Also, almost two years ago now, I reviewed the Xiaomi Pad 5, and while it was a solid little Android tablet, the pen, I didn't think the pen was very good at all. And since that is the main thing I am looking at, I thought, oh, here we go. I'm gonna have to jump through these hoops to find this tablet and get it set up just to find out that the pen isn't all that good again. However, this time they said they improved the pen and lo and behold, they did. It is much, much better. This is a good price with a good pen and a good screen. You know, I, I usually wait till the end of the video to say this, but I, I would recommend this. But right now, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for US folks because of a couple of those quirks with the language and the interface. But with that disclaimer out of the way, let's dive into these specs. This is an 11 inch LCD 2.8K display with 144 Hertz refresh rate. Even though this isn't an OLED display, it is a very nice looking LCD display. The bezels around the edge aren't super huge. The colors really pop well. It's a laminated display. And even though the price isn't very high. It feels very premium. It's got an all aluminum back. The camera module looks really good. Holding in this in your hands feels great. The buttons are really clicky and nice. The thing that surprised me the most about this is as I was using it, it never felt cheap. You can get this in several different colors. I opted for a blue, but it's also available in gold and in black. Now this blue really looks silver. You have to get it in a certain kind of light before you actually see that little tint or touch of blue to it. There are different storage options as well. You can get this with six gigabytes of RAM at 128 gigs of storage, or you can get two other configurations at eight gigabytes of RAM, one with 128 gigs of storage and one with 256 gigs of storage. I wasn't sure about the performance and I ended up jumping up to that eight gigs of RAM with the 128 of storage just for testing. And performance wise, it feels good. This is another area where it just doesn't feel budget. Part of it might be that Qualcomm Snapdragon 870 processor is solid. It definitely gets the job done. And the specs on the cameras are good too. This is a 50 megapixel camera around the back. And for a tablet, I thought the pictures that it was taking were, you know, good enough. They were solid. And for video calls and that sort of thing, the front facing camera works well too. Also worth pointing out that camera is along the top when you're in landscape mode, unlike some iPads, most iPads, where it's off to the side. You can also get some accessories with this. There's like a keyboard covery thing. I did not pick one of those up. I did, however, pick up the pen. It's as you probably noticed by now, since I've mentioned it at least twice and have been drawing with it this whole time. Like the Apple Pencil, it charges by snapping magnetically along the top. Also like the Apple Pencil, it costs $99. This might be just like a US thing, like the person that I bought it from was upcharging that pencil, maybe in other territories it costs significantly less, but I was surprised to see a really expensive stylus or them charging so much for a stylus when they're charging so little for the tablet itself. My takeaway from all of this is this does not feel like a cheap tablet. This feels on par with the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8. Even though the screen isn't quite as good, it's not an OLED screen in terms of build quality and all those other things that you look for in a premium tablet, they are here. The only area I would say that the Samsung tablets still have a leg up is with the pen. This is normally where I'd put the sponsor bit for the video, but I don't have a sponsor today. So I'm gonna talk about myself. So I have two courses, one that is all about learning to sketch and draw in 60 days, where every day there's a little lesson and you learn to draw and you get better 
better over time. And the second course is Introduction to Digital Art, which is what do you do with those sketches when you want to draw them digitally and finish them and overpaint them? A few years ago when I was teaching myself art, I realized that there's so much amazing content out there delivered by these amazing artists. But many of them were starting like at this really high level. And so what my courses are designed to do is fill in the gap to get you to that level where you can take those more advanced tutorials and more advanced courses. So yes, these are definitely catered towards beginners. There's some discount links down below in the description. Check those out to learn more and to support this channel. Under the pen. So the main thing that I look for first off with any pen is wobble. When I draw a very slow angled line, is that giving me any mechanical wobble to the pen? The answer here is yes. It's there if you go looking for it. However, compared to the pen that I saw last time, it is dramatically improved. A little bit of smoothing applied to your brushes in your drawing program can really help the pen out and really reduce that wave to almost nothing. Another thing that I've seen in pens that have been trying to reduce the amount of wave or jitter that you see in them lately is they've been applying their own mechanical smoothing to the pen, which has its own problems. It's harder to draw sharp angles, quick angles, that sort of thing. You also lose accuracy, just a lot of lag. But here there was almost no lag. Now lag comes from several different places. One, it comes from the actual performance of the hardware. Here it was performing really good. That 144 refresh rate definitely helps that out. It also comes from the optimization of your apps. Android apps aren't as well optimized as some of the iPad apps out there, but they're solid and they get the job done. And so here I felt like I wasn't getting too much lag. And then lastly is the pen itself. And so all of those things seem to be working pretty well. None of them are great and amazing and over the top, but all of them work together to give you a pretty darn good drawing experience. You are drawing with a plastic pen on a glass screen, so it does take a little bit of time to kind of start to learn to control that. It doesn't feel as natural as drawing, say, with a pencil or on a matte screen. You could probably get a matte screen protector for this if you really wanted to and draw on it that way. There's also two clickable buttons along the side. I had to twist the pen so I stopped accidentally pushing them because they stick out. They're really easy to click. Sometimes buttons that are really easy to click are a good thing on a pen. Not always because you don't want to accidentally turn on the notes app, but that didn't really get in my way too much. Another thing that I did have to get used to it is that the tip of the pen is a little springy. There's always a spring at the top of pens that's gonna help it detect the pressure. This one is probably a little bit more springy than what I'm used to, but it's another thing that's not, it's not horrible. It's just something you have to get used to when you're drawing with it. So overall, what do I think? Well, I kind of blew it at the beginning of the video when I told you that I already recommend this. Now, when I say I recommend this, I'm not saying it is the best thing ever or it's the best out there that you can necessarily get, but I think you're getting something that you can definitely draw on. And like I said before, I feel like there's a lot of things on here, uh, budget tablet that feel really premium and I love that. The downside of course is if you're in the US, there's a lot of quirks to this tablet because it's just not designed for our market. And there's probably a lot of settings that you could go in there and change. There's probably some keyboards that you can download that are gonna fix some of the little quirks that I had and some things that might put you off, but just no going into it that those sort of things are there. I reviewed the OnePlus tab uh, just, I don't know, a month or two ago. And overall, I was impressed with that. Um, this pen is better. Uh, also, the price of this device is better. So if you're trying to choose between those two, I would set the OnePlus tab aside for now and really focus your attention on this one. Now, when I'm comparing this to like, a Galaxy tablet, I think that this is this is getting close to like that S8 level of quality. I think the pen and the Galaxy tablets are better. If you get one that has an OLED screen, that's better, but you're also going to be paying for that. And I think that's what impressed me the most, that for $300, really we're talking $400 because you do have to buy the pen as well. That is a darn good deal for the level of quality you're going to get. If you look at something like the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which I think begins around $350, but you could usually find it for like 300 or possibly even less, you get a far less of a processor, the screen doesn't look quite as good, you know, you get a slightly better pen. Overall, when you start looking at those things, I think from the quality level, this one wins again. So it really comes down to price and what you're looking for, and if you're looking for a budget Android tablet, this might be my new winner. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.